the Caleb one, and today I'm going to be talking about human trafficking and women. Human trafficking is an important topic in regard to women's rights because it's just another example of how women are viewed as sexual objects or commodities to be traded and sold around the globe instead of human beings that are deserving of human rights. This is a picture of a woman holding a sign that reads, I am not for sale. What that means is simply just that. A woman's body is not a commodity to be sold, traded, or exploited, whether it's sexually or through forced labor. She is a human being with thoughts and feelings and deserves the rights of one. Let's start by talking about what is human trafficking. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes defines human trafficking as any form of recruiting, transporting, transferring, harboring, or receiving a person by means of threats, use of force, or other forms of coercion, abduction, fraud, or deception. In other words, human trafficking is the act of illegally training, pe trading people across national, national borders or within areas of a nation for the sole purpose of exploitation. Human traffickers sell and trade humans for two reasons, either for sexual exploitation or forced labor. Sex trafficking is, is the trading in persons for the purpose of sexual exploitation. So who is involved in human trafficking? Research shows that of the 800,000 people that are trafficked across national borders, 80% of them are women and 50% are minors. But what makes women so vulnerable to human traffickers? Human traffickers tend to go after people in society who live in poverty, aren't well educated, and have a lack of job opportunities. As we have seen throughout this class, women are more susceptible to all of these things because of their responsibilities in the home and to child care. Society is telling them what they can and can't do because of their gender and therefore labeled as people who can't take on leadership roles. Human, tra human traffickers use deceptive methods in order to recruit these women because their education level is low and they don't have other opportunities available to them. It is assumed that they will take whatever they can get. Unfortunately, in many cases, women will do just that and that's how they wind up in situations of human and sex trafficking. So human traffickers often use two methods of recruiting trafficking victims. Some will use a method called finesse pimping, meaning that they give their victims a false sense of compassion and luring them with gifts and cash to make the victims feel as though they owe their perpetrator something in return. These promises can be things such as better job opportunities, citizenship, receiving an education, or a marriage proposal that turns into bondage. Debt bondage fits into the idea of finesse pimping because it's the idea that the victim owes their perpetrator something in return for their good deeds to them. Human traffickers will also go to the parents or husbands and offer gifts and many other commodities in exchange for their daughters or their wives. Another form of recruitment human traffickers will use is guerrilla pimping, which is using acts of threats, violence, and force in order to trap and enslave the victim. It can be as simple as taking them off the street or holding them at gunpoint. Human traffickers place multiple barriers on their victims in order to limit their attempts to escape. They put up legal barriers by taking away their, any documentation that proves they're either citizens or immigrants. On top of that, since most victims are immigrants in the country that they were taken to, language barriers also make it difficult for them to ask for help if they are able to escape in the first place. Human tra traffickers instill fear into their victims by, for example, telling them that they will kill them or their family members if they dare to try to escape. Along with these comes with the limited knowledge and a lack of money. How big of a problem is human trafficking? Human trafficking is a growing problem in the United States as well as across the globe. In fact, it is the fastest growing area of organized crime and the third largest income revenue for organized crime. The global sex trade alone is worth over 30 billion per year, making it the fastest growing form of trade in the world. What is unique about sex trafficking is that unlike drugs and narcotics, where dealers can only sell substances to one person at a time, traffickers can earn their profits from their sex slaves over a number of years.
Human trafficking not only strips people, particularly women, of their human rights, but also destroys public health and creates problems with social development and the deterioration of communities. Women who have been subjected to human trafficking have suffered through many instances of physical and emotional harm, as well as social isolation. Women who have been subjected to sex trafficking are likely to contract STIs and UTIs, experience pain in the pelvis and their vaginal areas and rectums, as well as unwanted pregnancies. In general, victims of human trafficking may also have severe injuries such as broken bones, scars, and traumatic brain injuries. Victims of human trafficking may also be diagnosed with PTSD, depression, anxiety, and other and may either already have or are more susceptible to a drug abuse problem. Shockingly, the United States is one of the world's top destinations for sex trafficking. In fact, between 14,500 and 17,500 people are tra trafficked in the United States every year, and many United States children are sold into trade from here to other industrialized nations such as Germany and Japan. The people that are trafficked here in the United States are mainly immigrants from countries with political climates that are unstable and don't have a lot of money, which is why a lot of them don't have documentation to begin with. The highest cases of human trafficking tend to be in restaurant work, domestic servitude, sweatshop and factory work, hotel work, farming, and sex work. We see the most cases in parts of the country that have the highest undocumented immigrant population, such as Florida, New York, and California. We have seen how human trafficking takes away the rights of women and destroys society. Healthcare workers are the first line of defense against human trafficking and by identifying victims and pointing them in the direction of legal professionals and mental health specialists. The link on the slide will direct you to a 2020 report on the United States government efforts to combat human trafficking. You will see a list of 10 efforts that our government has made to tackle the issue. Specifically, number four on the list talks about how the United States works with other nations in order to combat human trafficking. One of the ways specified under this effort was by issuing an annual trafficking in persons report in June 2020 that assesses government's anti-trafficking reports, the changes that the report has gone through in the past 20 years, and puts pressure on governments to make progress that is measured on a year-round basis. If we if we as a nation, as well as other nations, take reports like these seriously and make every effort possible to combat human trafficking, we can improve the lives of many women and improve social development where it is needed.